excuse me for pointing my feet at you. <laughs> Maybe I've never explained this before. I should. But I have the, what do you call it? Swirly feet. Swirly feet. <laughs> Swirly feet. That's what it is. There's, there's a name for it. Edema. Edema. Huh? Edema. 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 Yes. Edema. Thank you. But my feet swell easily when I sit with them down. So that's the reason I'm sitting with them up. I do not mean to be pointing my feet at you rudely. That's not my intention. <laughs> as long as they're not smelly, it's okay. I'm sorry? As long as they're not smelly, then it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have, oh, Goofy has a question. He's here. Ah. Thank you for your question. Meditating a separate self-identity, what does it mean, especially the word identity? Okay. <clears throat> By the grace of Bhagavan Ramana, in 1973, I uh, reached the place of completing my sadhana. and uh, have been abiding in the awareness of being ever since then. And since abiding in the awareness of being, I now am able to look and see and function from the awareness as the awareness and be able to observe what formally, before that, awakening, was the state in which uh, I lived, which, without judgment, I see to be the state that the majority of ordinary people in the world are living. And that state is the meditation of a separate self-identity. Now, let me explain that. If it needs any further explanation, it's seeing from awareness of the self that we actually are. Since I live, I choose to live and recognize the self as being the one self that we all are. Now, the people coming here, not only here but to our ashram in America, People who come for uh, in, involved in their quest to have their own awakening are identifying themselves to be their body and identifying with their mind and the role that they are playing every day in life as to who they take themselves to be as a body-mind entity. Born of certain parents on a certain day, in a certain city, in a certain country, and uh, my parents were, my father did such and such, and such a work, I now am such and such an individual doing different whatever my job is, whatever my vocation happens to be or my duties in life happen to be. That's identifying with the body and the mind as though that is who and what one is. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Well, when we are identified with the body and the mind as though that's who and what we are, when the fact of the matter is, the, the truth is, that we are actually the faceless, formless awareness of being that was never born, 
and that will never die, that our true nature is consciousness, awareness, uncaused, unqualified, pure being, not a form, not a person, not an individual living in time and space, but that's who we, if we're identified with that, and that's what we're assuming ourselves to be, and who we're assuming ourselves to be, then we're taking that to be our identity, the self that we're taking ourselves to be. All right? So, what does it mean? Especially the meaning identity. Your name and form that you are identified with and calling you and calling me as a separate entity living in time and space. That's the identity I'm talking about. Is that who you think you are? No judgment, just look. That's who I'm identified with, yes. Well, when we are taking ourselves to be such an entity, that's meditating a separate self-identity. And that puts us in the category of living in time and space and in the limitation of time and space when the truth is, capital T, we are the absolute, unqualified, unconditioned, pure being, the self, that was unborn and which will never die. That's spiritual awakening. sentence I said. <laughs> we are the who we are? What's the spiritual awakening? What's the spiritual awakening is? The spiritual awakening is awakening to and abiding in the awareness of the pure being of the self as opposed to continuing to identify with the name and the form that we're taking ourselves to be. The time and space entity that we take ourselves to be. Okay? Just let it be. If you're abiding in awareness as awareness and there are no thoughts, then you're abiding in who and what you are. Now if thoughts rise, you might now ask who's having the thoughts in order to redirect the attention back into the pure awareness of the self. Just in the thoughtless, pure awareness. Which is free of time and space. Free of body, mind, and mind. And to, whatever, to what extent you're able to abide continuously in the pure awareness of the self, free of the mind, back, you might say, prior to the mind, prior to the mind and its conditioning. 
then you can free yourself from the mind. You'll still have the mind. You'll still have all that you recall as who you take yourself to be in memory. But you'll see that that's not who you are. You can really just see through that and know that that's more or less like the role that you have been playing or are playing all along, but know that that's really not you. Okay? Isn't the key through perceptions? In other words, human perception says that I'm this guy right here. My perception just seems to say, oh wow, it's obvious. I'm just this guy. And so then you're saying there's another perception too. That you I'm perceive saying, from since 1973, you perceive in a different way. And so then the trick is like, don't trust those perceptions. That they're so colored or they're so filtered through your conditioning that they're, they're not trustworthy. And that it's rare that people will ask you to actually not trust your own perceptions. It's like kicking out the foundations from underneath you and saying, well, what you perceive is really not what is. Well, you might see it that way. You see it that way? I just see it that, uh, no, uh, it, I mean, what I perceive, it changes, you know, over the, over the time. And so then it's not fixed. And so I'm beginning to think that my perceptions must be very filtered. And, and the way I put the world together depends on what I saw ye yesterday or, or what I learned. And uh, maybe I should just throw it all out. I'm not saying throw out anything. I'm saying see through what is occurring and be aware of what the seer is in seeing through what's occurring. Is there, if, it might be wise in some, in some situations to distrust who you have been taking yourself to be. For example, in, as you started what you just stated, you're saying as a human being, are you a human being or are you a divine being? I've always just gone along with my perceptions and said, oh, this is a guy that's not very good in school and that, uh, you know, had a few odd jobs and never kept one and, uh, and so on and so on, you know. Those were kind of like my perceptions. And <laughs> yes, I can understand. And I went to church and they said I was a divine being and I just said, well, where does that come from, you know? It must be out there somewhere or up there somewhere. Where can I grab it or where can I touch it? Where's the handles on it? I can't, there's no handles, there's nowhere to grab it. With my perceptions, there was just nowhere. It just seemed like it's such a jump, you know. And then I thought, oh, well, you just have to live in the clouds or live, you know, just totally trust. And there's nothing <coughs> to grab onto, but you just make a jump. Maybe because you're just a failure like I am down here at this level. And if you're enough of a failure, you just give it all up and jump away. You know, it's just perceptions. We're, we're kind of like my God. Okay. Whose perceptions? I always owned them. I always put my name on them. Mm -hmm. You put your name on them. Yeah. That I, <clears throat> as Richard Miller, yeah. have these perceptions. I did that. <clears throat> but who is Richard Miller that has these perceptions? That's what I've tried to grab, you know. <laughs> Is this entity, Richard Miller, who really you are? See, so many miracles have happened in my life that I have to, that I would be a fool to really say that I did it. And that even now, you know, even in these last days and months and just day by day, it's just uh, so awesome. If you just step back and take a look at the world, it's just such a miracle that you really can't claim very much about it as your own. And? So I can't 
be the guy that did anything. <laughs> By elimination. Yeah. If we take the con this inquiry, see, as I was, as I, in answering a lot of this question, I, Jaffe, excuse me, your name? Yofi. Who? Yofi. Yofi's question. I commenced it by saying, <laughs> she's the one that beats the daylights out of me. <laughs> I pay her to beat me. <laughs> I'm a masochist, I enjoy it. <laughs> Prior to nineteen seventy three, when Bhagavan assisted me in redirecting my attention into the being of the self. I too was just seeing myself as a human being living in time and space in a body subject to the limitations of, the, of a body, the, the, the desires and the fears and the dreads and so forth of a body. But I no longer see that anymore. And in following his teaching, my own, my own awakening that parallels what his teaching will direct anyone into if they are willing, ready and willing to make the inner quest into the true nature of being, that anyone can awaken to the true nature of one's own being. And with that awakening, one comes to see that this self that you're talking, I mean, this God that you're talking about as a divine entity happens to be not distant and removed and far away, but happens, as Jesus said, to dwell within us. Jesus himself said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else will be ours as well. Everything will be added unto us. And when asked about this location of the kingdom of God, he said, quit looking for signs to be observed outside of yourself, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Well, sure enough, that's what the realization has turned out to be. And what the realization is, is that what is going on in the way of the suffering of humanity is our incorrectly assuming ourselves to be who and what we're not, taking that to be as though that's who and what we are. But in truth, we're not a human being. We are divine beings. But we're caught in the role of being a human being, as though this role of a human being, living in time and space, is who we are. And I have had the insight of that to the, to the extent that I also know it happens to be the truth of all of us who are ready and willing to have this insight or this awakening for themselves. And basically that's what Aham is about. That's how Aham came into being, is to share this with anyone and everyone who is open and receptive and ready to receive it, realize it for themselves. Bam. Yes. Did you get him? Yes. Good. We blessed him to a higher state. <laughs> I 
I certainly do not claim to have any exclusive exclusivity on the market of spiritual awakenings, just that I have had the event. It has occurred. I know there are those, I've read the scriptures, uh, who say that those who say have not and those who have not have do not say, but what are you going to do, to deny? Well, I'm not here to deny anything. I'm just here to be. Talk about stabilization. So I've had this insight, but then stabilization? I stabilization. Yeah, then I then I think maybe I got a couple appointments tomorrow. I better check into those. <laughs> okay. Seems like a slide back and forth. <clears throat> when you're saying stabilization, you mean that you're needing to be stabilized in the state that you are now finding yourself to be in? I may. You Is know, that what you're and, meaning, or I, what? I would have to assume that it's going to go away. <clears throat> so you have a, evidently had an awakening, or a tentative awakening, a partial awakening, or a whole awakening, and you don't want to lose it. Is that what you're saying? One of those things. I'm sorry? One of those things. One of those things. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what is it that needs to be stabilized, and to whom is the stabilization needed? It seems like the attention needs to be stabilized, because the attention can go focus down on some real tight things and saying, oh my God, I'm going to miss my appointment, or this guy doesn't understand me, or I'm not doing this right. And then other times, attention can be just kind of wide and everything shines. All right. Well, I would suggest in that regard, <clears throat> that you start your stabilization process of first stabilizing into what is the true basis of your being. Where is the basis? What is the foundation of your being? From whence is it all occurring that you're calling occurrences, experiences, whatever it is that happens to be the event that is going on? From whence are you seeing it? Who is it that has a responsibility, an obligation, <clears throat> or something to accomplish? Let that be the basis of your stabilization. Know who you are. Where do you function from? What's the basis from which you function? And not assume that you know because if you're having the question about stabilization, then what is it that needs to be stabilized and why? So maybe that's the place to start your inquiry. But when you have reached the base of your being to where there is no <clears throat> more solid or underlying presence other than the presence that you are, then look and see everything from that base as to what needs to occur if there is anything further that needs to occur. In most cases, many cases, that in itself will be a major completion as to who is it that needs to be stabilized. Is that a new perception? And does that take a uh, remembrance? It might be prior to all perceptions, if you go deep enough. <laughs> so what is it that perceives? No matter whatever it is that is being perceived, what or who is perceiving? Until you reach the point in which the light that is shining as perception itself <clears throat> cannot shine on itself because it is that which shines on everything.
like unconditioned consciousness. Ah, sorry. Consciousness and conditioned consciousness. Is this when 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 consciousness lends its its light to the mind? Is this conditioned <coughs> consciousness? Uh, this morning when I was saying that I'm, I'm I, if, I rec if I recall, I probably was using the synonymous terms when I was using, I was using a statement that I've used before. I can't take credit for it as one of my teachers about the unconditioned consciousness of being. Con con becomes conditioned by imagining itself to be something. Now that function takes place with mind. And when the mind then being used by the unconditioned consciousness of being assumes a particular role or a particular form or uh, entity or whatever, then, it, uh, then in the assuming of that form, it becomes that a form and creates that of a nothingness of pure being. That's what I was referring to this morning when I was, whatever it was that I was saying. Is there, is there some particular part of that that you would like clarification on? You said now it creates uh, out of the no thing. I'm sorry? I understood now that you said you create out of the, it creates out of the no thing pure being or this being. Well, I often say it this way I am the no thingness out of which. That which is appearing to be takes form, takes form. Now that process is the process of mind, but the nothingness is the pure being. So the I am is the pure being out of which, the pure being which is the no thingness out of which the thing that I assume myself to be that or whoever I assume myself to be is taking form is the manifestation which is everything yes everything is a, is a manifestation out of the nothingness of the I am that we all are, and this is the this is the creative process that takes place in the individual that we take ourselves to be, and this is the process of meditating a separate self identity. It's just if we. If we can reduce it down to the, just very simple terms, the basis, it's very simple, very basic, and very freeing when we have the insight as to the simplicity of it. moments when we're together in this way, it's a matter of openly tuning in, or even 
inwardly tuning in to the presence of I amness. One's own presence of I amness. And the feeling of this presence of I amness. This feeling of the presence of I amness that is before I am this or that. What occurs is when we as when we <coughs> add to I am the notion of I am this or that, what seems to be an addition is in fact a subtraction. We are limiting the pure, absolute, unlimited pure being of the self by the subtraction of limiting it to this or that. self that we are is all-encompassing, but we limit it to the confines or the boundaries of the body-mind living in time and space. Not only that, if we're not, we even limit it to time and space. Time can be ongoing and space can be unlimited but time and space are a limitation on the unlimited pure awareness of being. And it so happens that we are the unlimited pure awareness of being in which time and space are appearing. Or you might say on which they are appearing, just like a, a movie in the theater is appearing on the screen of the movie and it is ongoing, but that's just the pictures. The only reality is the screen. Well, the only reality is the I am, the pictures of time and space. Are only appearances. The body itself is only a thought. Look at it this way. In order to have a body, time and space are both necessary. Space is necessary in order to occupy the volume of it a body takes. This body requires more space than this one. And Time is necessary to measure the duration, the longevity of the body. So both time and space are absolutely necessary to have the existence of a body. Can we all see that? Now what a paradox. Both time and space are necessary in order to have a body and yet both time and space are concepts. So the body that we take ourselves to be is only a concept. Living in time and space. Time and space itself is the concept and the body is a concept living in the concept. Are we concepts? See, we attribute existence to time and space. We attribute existence to the body. We attribute existence to objects, to persons, places, and things.
but are we that exists? Do we just attribute existence to us, or can we deny that we exist? Can we really deny that we exist? Or we can say the words. We can declare our own existence, which would be kind of foolish to do so. Our existence is not questionable. But the existence of the world, of other people in time and space, and even our own bodies. We can say, well, I don't question my body, but it, it is appearing in my mind. And it's appearing in time and space. But these are appearing in the mind. When it means, while in dreamless sleep, Our mind is not existing, our body is not existing, nor is time and space existing. But we don't cease to exist. When we wake up, we say, I, have a, I had a wonderful sleep. So to that extent, we must have been present during our sleep. How do we know we had a wonderful sleep? But the world was not there telling us that we existed. It is we that knows that we existed. Some may argue that the world was still existing while we were asleep because there were other people that were awake that tell us that the world was existing while we were asleep. <clears throat> but do we need the testimony of these while we're asleep to tell us that we existed while we were asleep? We're aware. If we existed, we must also take, take it that we're also aware. Our existence and our consciousness, we as consciousness and we as existence, are not different. To be, to exist, Know that we there is no such thing <clears throat> as unself conscious existence. I don't understand that. I don't get it. I'm sorry? I don't get it. Take it that if you did you exist? Did you cease existing during sleep? I don't know anything. True, you may have not have known that you were not, your mind was not there to know objects in the ordinary way that you would know things. But you don't go to sleep as Rami and wake up as Jane. Your being does not cease. Do you honestly believe that your being ceases? <coughs> I, I, get you, I get it. Huh? I get it. You get it? Okay, so your being, so your self exists. You as self still exist. So if you as self exist, then you know that there is no such thing as unself conscious existence. So, so with, with that part in mind, even when when people leave their body after they die, leave their body, their, their being. Your being does not cease. Right. So it's the same thing. Okay. 
Your mind ceases, yes. Your body ceases, yes. But not your being. identity. Your very existence is your identity. Your very being is your identity. But this being may be different, not only is different, the pure being of the self that you are is not the self that we ordinarily take ourselves to be. Not the body mind. The body mind is the meditation of a separate self identity. When we're identified with it, when we're taking the body mind to be the self that we assume ourselves to be. Are you sorry you asked this question? It's gone on this far? <laughs> But let's say, uh, like, how you jump? How you jump? Okay, like, how you jump between the identified and, and what you are? Jumping? Yeah, like, I can understand about what is the true self, okay? But I still live like this. But it's still... You still live and act like a self-separate. How do you jump? Jump? Yeah. There's no jump necessary. You never left. There's no jumping necessary. There may be a covering up, a concealing, a hiding of the true self that you are with the self that you're taking yourself to be, but no jumping Yeah, but if it was a fully understanding, okay, about the true self, I would already live like, live it. If what? If it was a fully understanding, okay, about the true self, I would already live it. <clears throat> not necessarily. If you are identified with what you're not, believing yourself to be your body, which is hiding and concealing the underlying truth of the real self that you are, then you would still be identified with your body and your mind with your form and not with your essence. For example, water <clears throat> can be in manifestation as ice or as steam. Its essence is no different. Ice is just one form. Steam is its essence as another form. You can say what it's made up of is H2O. So while it is, while it is in manifestation as ice, it did not leave, in a manner of speaking, its true essence, its true nature as steam or as water. It's just a different expression. It's just a different mode of manifestation. Well, likewise, you as pure being are manifesting as a body, but that's not the essence of who and what you are. And you may not be recognizing that your essence is spirit and pure consciousness rather than name and form if you're just identified with the name and form as to who and what you are. All right? Not a jump. 
It's just one covering up the other, concealing the other, one from the other, so to speak. Just an analogy. But still, you've never left your pure being while you are identified with the being that you're taking yourself to be. In other words, what it boils down to, we're all divine beings involved in the role of human beings thinking that we're human beings. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it, but we're limiting ourselves to the level of human being when in truth we're divine beings. In one way, it seems to be a jump, you know, because the teaching comes as a story. You're telling us about something. But being is not a story or not in the story. It's before the story. So the recognition may be a jump. But sometimes, I don't know, I, I say these teachings, they're not very good teachings. They're, they're wonderful discoveries. But to say life is oneness or we're all one, you know, the teaching is not all a story, and that just this group is a teaching. This satsang this morning was a teaching, and just talking together and asking questions is a teaching. And then the stories are a teaching too, but somehow it all goes together, and there's a discovery or a rekindling, or a, a remembering or a re-knowledge that hopefully pops out. The what? It pops out, you know. It, it becomes evident. And uh, that seems that that's the purpose. You know, analogies and parables is about all that we can work with. Jesus taught with parables and analogies. Huh? Well, all of the teachers. That's the jump that we're talking about. If there is well, a jump, you know. Okay, I mean, then the maybe jump out of the parable correct. and into <clears throat> Then I may be incorrect in my words. Okay, if we want to see it as a jump, if that, if that suits you better, if that feels better for you, and you can see it and, 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 and have a better understanding or a clarity for you in that regard, then fine, that's all right. I mean, if I'm left stuck in the story and I'm going, oh, i got to get that somehow. Because I, one of the limitations of the mind is logic, you know, so then the story has to be lo somewhat logical, otherwise it just falls flat. And so then life is not necessarily logical, so then, uh, but the mind is not needed for life, you know, because we're just alive anyhow. So then that part is hard to kind of jam in the story. Yes, life is, itself is not logical, you're correct. It's very unreasonable. <laughs> that part I hate. Uh, <laughs> that part I hate! Uh -huh. <laughs> but if we're able to live in the awareness in which it's okay that it is illogical, then what difference does it make? When we are able to remain in the pure awareness as the pure awareness, then its unreasonableness is, can be very acceptable and very free. what Sri Bhagavan calls the heart, the self. That's the whole point.
sit in a woman, or is there a difference between men and women spirits? I'm sorry, I that don't hear well. Is <laughs> there a difference between men and women spirits? I'm still no. a woman. I'm still Only a woman. in the body. The body is a woman, but the spirit not. <clears throat> the self is neither masculine nor feminine. It's the body that is masculine or feminine. says that God takes care of everything. Do you, I mean, time and space is probably a concept in your mind, but do you think that when the time is right, we will reach whatever destination? And all this is just going through the motions. <clears throat> yes. You already are if you are in the, pro I'm not accusing anyone here of on a quest. Evidently, though, we are on a quest, or some of us are. And if you are, then the quest that you're on, the paradox is you already are that which you're seeking. And so it will all work out in due time. There is no one who will not awaken ultimately to the true nature of the being of the self that we all are. We, the, the, the paradox of that is, is that we're looking forward to it to happen sometime like in the future. Well, there is no future. There's only the here and now this present moment. So we're already in this present moment that which we think we're on our way to attaining in the future. To the extent that we're not identifying with it rather than identifying with what we're not, this identification with what we're not is itself no judgment, but it's just suffering. That's the problem. Now, if we don't, are not thinking that we have a problem, then we don't have a problem. If we remain in the thoughtless awareness of being, as the thoughtless awareness of being, then there is no problem. There may be events happening, situations occurring. Are we calling them problems? Or are we seeing them as problems? Are we perceiving them as problems? That it, it would be we then that are the ones that are creating them as problems, when in fact they're just facts, they're just events, just happenings. What might be a problem to one person to someone else right next to them, seeing the same thing as an event, may not see it as a problem. So it's according to the seer of the event, the mind of the seer, that calls it this or that or problem. But the truth is, we are living in this ever-present, infinite, and eternal now. Thinking that this now is time and space. That in itself is just a perception, a concept. If we're not holding the concept of time and space of, as having reality or or let's say control over us and we're living in the uh, in the pure awareness of being as the pure awareness of being and everything is okay very basic very simple okay Give me a two-minute signal, all right? Two minutes.
Let's just use it. Allow it. Allow this two minutes to be. As it is. Float in it. Surrender to it. Let go as it. It's been delightful to be with all of you today. What is today? Tuesday. Tuesday. <laughs> I don't know one day from the other. You're all welcome to return on Friday if you wish. Tell your friends if any of them would like to come. They, we have tea on Thursday. They can come for the orientation. Namaste. Namaste.